And how are my reading friends out there, people of Earth? My name is Erin, and welcome back to my booktube channel. I think we can all agree that 2020 and 2021 have been crazy odd and crazy hectic years, right? Well, I've been wanting to make a throwback to 2019 booktube video about the best and worst books that I read that year prior to all the crazy that has happened in the past two years. So, let's begin this video. The best book of 2019 was Until Friday Night by Abby Glines. This is a young adult fiction contemporary romance novel, and it's about this girl named Maggie whose dad killed her mom in front of her, and she stopped talking after that night. And then the book also focuses on West, dad is dying of cancer and he doesn't talk to any of his friends about it, including his best friend Brady Higgins, who is Maggie's cousin. Maggie goes to live with her uncle and aunt and Brady, and then she meets West. West is drawn to Maggie's silence and confides in her about his dying dad. Maggie feels protected by West, and she falls for him as hard as he's fallen for her. And Maggie and West become an item and they heal together, but then Maggie gets scared when she thinks that West only loves her because she is healing him by using their relationship as a crutch. So, what will Maggie and West do when they realize they can't live without each other? My rating for this book, five stars. Why did I choose this rating? This book was so well written that it draws you in right away and already has you reading this book in a single sitting, like I did. Also. The writing style was flowing between two different point of views, Maggie's and West's, and they were intense and incredible. The characters have depth, are diverse, and you're bound to like most of them. Not West's ex-girlfriend, she is cruel and vicious and out for blood more than a shark. And then the book also deals with modern issues of teenage angst and drama and family issues. The next book that comes to mind is And We Call It Love by Amanda Vink. This is a young adult fiction contemporary poetry novel, and it's about these two best friends, Claire and Zari, and they're both young musicians slash songwriters and are pretty much like sisters, but when Zari starts dating Dion, everything changes, and not for the better. Dion is an abusive boyfriend to Zari, and Zari's parents still think he's a great guy, and that Claire is the bad influence. When I read that, I was like, um, excuse me? When Claire sees Zari's bruises, she knows something is wrong and wants to protect Zari. When faced with Zari's disapproving parents and violent Dion, what will Zari do? Will Zari write a song, perhaps called, And We Call It Love? Or will she let go of her friendship with Zari? My writing for this book was five stars because it was so intense, incredible, dark, and beautiful all the same. Why did I choose this rating? I read this book in a single sitting, and that took me less than a day, which was so worth it. And it focused on true friendships going through dark and difficult trials, loneliness, disapproving parents, abusive relationships, neglect, all sorts of things. This book was inspiring, and I believe it to be a need-to-read book that I would recommend to anyone and everyone, because this book shows what a relationship should not be, but also shows what friendship should be. This book made me applaud Claire's dedication and loyalty to Zari. Even when Zari's parents thought that Claire was a bad person, she still stuck by Zari and protected her when Zari needed her most. The next book that came to mind is When the World Didn't End by Caroline Kaufman. No relation to Amy Kaufman, who wrote the Illuminae series, with Jay Kristoff. When the World Didn't End is a fictional contemporary poetry novel, and Caroline Kaufman, who is a teenage Instagram sensation and author of Light Filters In, writes her second book, When the World Didn't End, and this book is about love, forgiveness, self-discovery, and the battle with depression. This book is perfect for fans of Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur, 
which I read, I loved, and highly recommend. And The Princess Saves Herself in This One by Amanda Lovelace. I read it, I loved it, and I also recommend it. And then Pillow Thoughts by Courtney Peppernell. I read that, I loved that, I recommend the entire Pillow Thoughts series to everyone. My rating for When the World Didn't End is four stars. The reason I say four stars was because it wasn't a five star favorite, but it also wasn't mediocre, so I would have to say it's a rating of four. This book makes me think of my own issues and battles, and I found it really enlightening. Another book that comes to mind in my throwback to 2019 is The Elite by Kira Cass. This is a young adult fiction dystopian romance novel. The selection began with 35 girls, but now the four love competition is narrowed down to six elites who now compete against each other for Prince Maxon's heart. America is still struggling to decide where her heart truly lies. Is it with Maxon, who could make her life a fairy tale, or is it with Aspen, her first love? My rating for this book? One star. Why did I choose this rating? I didn't like the characters' interactions. America wasn't as assertive in this book as she was in the first, and Celeste ripped America's eye-catching dress before national television. Maxon's father, King Clarkson, was mean to America and favored Celeste. Why? And another thing, King Clarkson was abusive to Maxon for not getting rid of America, and Clarkson hoped that America would have just been one of the throwaway girls at the beginning of the competition. But that was before Prince Maxon fell head over heels in love with her. Even though I finished the book, I was left unimpressed. However, I have read all the other books in the series, except for The Crown, because I actually want to extend the series as much as I can, because I don't want to say goodbye to America and Maxon's daughter in the two sequel books. The final book that comes to mind when I think of my throwbacks to 2019 video, I can think of 30 Sunsets by Christine Hurley DeRiso, or DeRiso, I do not know how to pronounce her name. 30 Sunsets is a young adult fiction coming of age romance, and it's about this girl named Forrest who goes to her summer house with her family, her mom, her dad, and her older brother Brian, and this time around, Brian invites his girlfriend, Olivia, to come to the summer house with them, and Forrest doesn't know why. Forrest never liked Olivia, always thought, oh, she's trying to steal my brother away from me, and she also has reason to believe that she thinks Olivia has an eating disorder. Bound to find out the truth, Forrest discovers that Olivia is pregnant with Brian's baby. Over summer vacation, Forrest finds out a lot about her family that she didn't know before. If you want spoilers, here they are. Brian was conceived by rape, so Forrest's dad isn't actually Brian's bio dad, meaning that Brian and Forrest are actually half siblings. Another thing that is a spoiler, but also something that I really hated about this book, was Brian's mom was asking her church friends to adopt Brian and Olivia's baby behind their backs because she didn't want to be the young grandma. Well, that alone made her my least favorite character in this entire book, and that baby is not hers. So she has no right to adopt out her own grandchild. If that was me, if I was Olivia and I found that out, I would slap my mother-in-law across the face and say, get the heck out of my life and stay away from my baby. My rating for this book was one star. Why did I choose this? Forrest is a rather unaware character, not knowing a lot about what's going on around her. Forrest and Brian's mom is controlling, especially with the idea of adopting out her grandbaby without asking Brian or Olivia, and I hated her with every fiber of my being. This book got me so enraged that I really couldn't finish reading the book, and I am glad that I didn't because I didn't want to waste my time reading a book that I didn't like. This is a book I do not recommend to anyone who is pro-life or pro-choice. I am sorry, Christine, but your book just wasn't for me at all. I have a bit of a headache now talking about 30 sunsets, so I'm going to end the video here. If you enjoyed this video, 
Hit that like button to show some support. Subscribe to my booktube channel to get more videos like this. Turn on those notifications to be notified when I have a brand new video uploaded every other day. Keep on reading and have a great day everyone!